Jesus has said to us through this foot washing exercise, I'm calling you to simple acts of service like foot washing. And because we can get hung up on that, because whole movements, uh, religious movements have been founded on that, and the foot washing Baptists. I just need to say here, he's talking about things like holding the door open for someone. Now holding the gate open, open for someone with a pram that's going into the children's ministry centre. Picking up the discarded coffee cup that the wind has blown from around there, right out there somewhere, and put it in the bin. Picking up a piece of paper, being observant enough to say, oh, there's, that, that, it's actually a weed in that garden, not an exotic plant, I'm pulling it out. <laughs> and even if you do pull out the exotic plant, that's all right, because most of them are going to come out anyway. Jesus has said to us through this foot washing exercise, I want you to, do, to look at doing the menial task and not to walk by. This is not about starting something new in the life of the church. God knows we've got enough stuff already going on. He wants us, wants us to serve through what we are already doing. This is about an act of kindness, an act of service, maybe on this campus, maybe down at Stockton Shopping Centre. Still hold the door open there for some, you know. Bill Hybels, uh, who's like the author of uh, the Volunteer Revolution on which this campaign is based, tells a story about when they did this exercise in their church. And uh, so he got all revved up and, and started doing this stuff, holding the doors open, picking up pieces of paper, and doing whatever it took. And uh, that's what I hope will come out of this for us, you know. Uh, he, he took his family to the cinema. And this particular cinema didn't have one of those automatic opening doors uh, like, like we often have. Was a door. So he held it open for his wife and his daughter as they went through and then there's this older fellow coming behind him so he held it open for him. And the old guy goes through and he says, Jesus Christ, good service here. <laughs> Bill, said, Bill said, if only you. It was actually Jesus Christ but initiated this, you know. And, and uh, you, you might get that, that'd be good. Dr. Gilbert uh, Bill, Bilazikian, uh, who also a Greek guy and Bill Hybels mentor, uh, he's really, it's his, this quote that I'm about to give you that gave the title of this message, The Great Gamble, it's, it's given us a challenge, so listen to it. For six months, did we put that up there? Did we do that? We did it. For six months, take the great gamble. Follow the model of Jesus with reckless abandon. Take advantage of every opportunity to serve, even if it seems like something insignificant. Well, you can gamble on that. That's the foot washing thing, you know, the towel and the basin and the jug. The other one is you can pick up a deck of cards of life. And so he says, alternatively, put your energy and talent and bet your life on some other horse. Every chance you get, put yourself in the center. Be demanding. Ask the world to resolve, revolve around you. Try to get your own way. Disappear when it's time to do the dirty work. Just rock up and sit at the table. Have someone else to do the dirty stuff. So he said, that, he said, as you honestly assess this gamble, Jesus' model of doing the menial, inglorious task versus always trying to get our own way uh, with self at the center, which one do you think will draw you closer to God? Yeah. Now, here's the, here's the problem. Which one's going to bring you greater fulfillment? One of the great things in life is called perception. And perception is an individual's take on an issue of life. And, and that perception becomes your reality. It might be totally wrong. And the perception is that one day my lotto ticket will come in. And when it does, I'll be gloriously happy and fulfilled for the rest of my days. See, that, that's the lie of the devil. Perception. Let me just give you an example of perception. And I just had this chat with someone the other day. They said, you know, I don't think we've got any more people than we had 10 years ago here. I said, why would you say that? Well, less cars parked down there. See, the problem is, with that perception, is we never used to have any parking up there. And now there are 30 cars parked up there. Because we didn't have a car park up there. It was just the Badlands. In fact, we put bollards across there to stop people getting up there. Now we park 10 cars in the car bay up there, another 20 on the grass. Now, suddenly, I've just got to clear this perception up. Because, see, it's all going to change again. 
That grassed area up there is going to be out of bounds as of the 2nd of November. I've got to explain that because you woohoo people got it. You wow people got that. The rest of you didn't, see? Now I'm going to tell you. We're building an admin centre. It's been a protracted process with the City Council. I do not have the licence yet, but by faith we're starting on the 2nd of November. <laughs> the guy that's doing the site works will be here with his front end loader. And it will all change, that will be fenced off. And so 20 cars are up there now with something down there. Steve Under will do some charts of logistics and things like that. He's already drawn up a plan. He knows exactly how we'll fit in 20 cars. It won't just be 20 because come Christmas there'll be an extra 20. There'll be 40 extra cars down there. Some, somebody said, wow, didn't we grow overnight? Well, yes, but actually we just, just put your cars in different places, really. See the perception? See what I'm saying? Another thing, just on that perception, uh, when we built that new building and all the car parks up there, we used to have kids in here for the first part of the service and all their workers and helpers. Now we have a baptism we have them in, we put them against that wall, we crunch them up against that wall, all the workers are against that wall, uh, like they're there for the firing squad, and all the kids are cramping before them. They used to actually take a seat each. So we immediately moved out about 40 people out of our service, you see. So some go, what happened? We didn't grow. Yeah, we did. We just had two buildings for people. We actually doubled. That's what we're not. See, see how perception is? So perception is often that gold and glory will bring us the fulfillment and the satisfaction and the happiness in life. That's just a perception. And I'm saying it's a lie of the devil. See, there is another. Uh, Jesus makes the point that if he, teacher and Lord, he, second person in the Trinity, he, uh, Lord of Lords, King of Kings and like that, 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 if that's him, if he's willing to stoop down and get the, the dish, the basin and wash dirty feet, then why not us? Why not us, he says. You know, uh, if it's not beneath him, why should it be beneath us? Who will do the non-glamorous, unnoticed, menial task? That's the question he's raised. Who will take up the towel and live beyond themselves? Who will be ready to do the unnoticed, menial task? Who will be ready to volunteer for anything? Just picking up a piece of paper. So I wanted something more significant than that. Well, Jesus said, just pick up a piece of paper. I would go with what Jesus is on about. Because yeah. he's the one that's going to give you the ticket for pulling weeds. Open the door for someone. Huh. Volunteering for nursery. Huh? Those kids leave little deposits in their pants. Did you know that over the nursery? <laughs> or maybe service coordinates. See, you're unseen doing that stuff. Now, I need to tell you this. Jesus makes it very clear to his disciples once he has demonstrated this servant role and given instructions about it and explained it, that there is a blessing attached to following through on it. Even picking up a piece of paper. Here we go. Let's read this one together. Is it on the board? Here we go. John 13, whatever. I have set an example that you should do as I have done. Next slide. There isn't another slide yet. No, that's not what we want. No, it's not there. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. That's the one I wanted. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them, the blessing. So, in other words, those who live beyond themselves will become the recipients of God's sovereign blessings and favour. If you do what Jesus said. When you look around you and take up the challenge of, of doing the small, menial task, something supernatural will be released in you and through you. So, but I want to do the big one. I want to be in charge of something. I want to be on the platform. I want to be a leader. I want to run another ministry that we haven't yet got. We don't need another ministry. We just need to do well with what God's already given us. And Jesus said, just, just pick up a piece of paper, you know. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. When we hear these words from Jesus, we need to make a decision as to whether we will truly follow his example or not, or we, whether we'll go for the gamble uh, for glory and gold. Uh, we, we have a decision. Other than Jesus Christ, I think this is, this is true to say this, the smartest man in the world was Solomon. And you read the stuff you wonder, but the Bible says he's the wisest man. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we read that Solomon 
during one era in his life, he kind of took a swan dive uh, into the deep end of the self-gratification pool. He said, in fact, enough towelberry stuff for me. I'm not doing that basin of water washing the smelly feet, pick up a piece of paper and all that stuff. I'm going for the gold. I'm going for glory and gold. Ecclesiastes 2.1 and verses 4 and 8 in the message, Solomon speaking. He said, I said to myself, let's go for it. Experiment with pleasure. Have a good time. But there was nothing to it. Nothing but smoke. Oh, I did great things. I built houses and I planted vineyards. I thought about the vineyards. I'm going up with some team of people from this church on the next Friday and Saturday up to the Swan Valley and it's uh, spring in the valley up there at the moment. It's all about vineyards and uh, why did Solomon do this? Did he want to make his own wine? You know, he could bottle of wine. Solomon sat on one. A little picture of Solomon on the, you know, by my wine. How happy is I designed gardens and parks and planted a variety of fruit trees in them, made pools of water to irrigate the groves of trees. I amassed silver and gold for myself. Huh. Now look at this one. Ecclesiastes 2 9. I acquired men and women singers. See, he didn't just go down to the CD store and buy CDs. He didn't just log onto iTunes and download some tunes. He bought the whole band. The guitarists. The drummers, the musician, the pianist, the vocalist, he bought the whole lot and brought them home. And all in his place. Live music, no CDs and DVDs for this man. He had the whole lot there. Ecclesiastes 2.10, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart, no pleasure. Ecclesiastes 2.11, and when I had surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled for, everything was... It was like the chasing the wind. Nothing was really gained under the sun. Or as another translation says, vanity of vanities. The whole thing is vanity. The whole thing is vanity. Smiles guy in the world. Shoots for the jackpot, you know, for the gold and the glory of soul satisfaction, a sense of meaning uh, by means of massive self-gratification, and it ends in feelings of emptiness. And you can read in Ecclesiastes, read, read the whole book. Uh, you, can, <laughs> you don't even have to do that. Read the weekly newspaper, the daily newspaper. Uh, those of you who get those magazines, uh, New Idea and Women's Work, read it in there. It's, it's just sad news. It's just sad news. It's, it's, it's the, see it on the evening TV news. So. Gold and glory will not bring lasting fulfillment and satisfaction. Never will. You would think that somewhere in history, someone, a whole million voices would rise up and chorus uh, uh, that, 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 don't do that. Don't go for the gold and glory. Uh, don't just live for yourself. There's got to be something more than gold and glory and self-gratification. There's got to be something more. There's got to be something more. What is the alternative? What is the alternative? Well, it's the towel and the basin and the jug of water. It's following Jesus' example of serving others in the unseen, inglorious, menial tasks. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And there is a choice to be made. And that's why this message is called The Great Gamble. What are you going to put your energies into? What are you going to put into? The choice is self-gratification. Or following the example of of Christ. It's for one life. Just one life. Just one shot at it. And, and it's a huge gamble. 